um, I feel that this record uh, represents a lot of my life. So I feel great relief. I'm very excited. I'm very moved by it. And um, uh, I'm really proud of it. Worked really hard on it and put a lot of love into it. Um, a lot of miles of care and I've grown up admiring Michel Legrand. So he's a big part of my history. So um, my father is a pianist. I grew up with his music. So for me, this all comes together almost decades and decades of preparation. So why did it take so long to finish? Um, uh, I had some babies. <laughs> I had three babies um, over the course of making this record. Um, and uh, it was obviously wasn't planned, and I didn't mean to interrupt the record, but um, my first child, Victoria, was born. And that just was a whole nother beautiful thing. It was like you had to turn and look and go, oh my god, and stop. Becoming a mother, in a weird way, the, the record being in, was sort of side by side with me. And while I'm becoming a mother, I'm thinking, oh, this is, this, maybe someone dreamed us in that song about birth and life and connectedness and humility and magic, the majesty of everything living. You know, and there I had children and the song in the back of my mind, I'm still making this record. I think I should go back and sing that or I just love it even more. Michel Legrand does have a bit of um, some sauce in, in his songs. I mean, there you do feel that in his eyes, her eyes, for example, that these people are just hungry for each other, curious about each other, and it's not innocent per se. I would say a lot of songs surprised me uh, and surprised me sometimes when I wasn't recording them or working on them. I just, they would, the lyrics would, would be, because I worked on this for so long, the lyrics were in my body as I walked around the street. And Something New in My Life was a song, for example, that I actually can remember walking down the street one day and I had no children. And I was singing that song or hearing the lyrics and the idea of really letting something new into your life. In my life. Something that you always wished for but you never let yourself say. It's like kind of that feeling I had, a, I had a wish I never even admitted I had, and now I'm going to admit it, you know? So it's, the, the, it's a wonderful song, and I remember that song hitting me like a, like a beautiful lot, the sunrise, sunset, everything you can think of that song was a great revelation. The songs got chosen at my piano in my apartment in New York City with Michelle. Um, uh, we sat down, we went through all of his music, and going through that was an incredible experience. And, and he, would, he would put a, a song up, and sometimes he had a gut instinct, nah, he would go, no, 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 no. He would go like this. I never even had a chance to, you know, really try. Other times, um, he'd let something sit there a while, and he, he would, it was something kept between us, really. You see, it wasn't just for me or the lyric or my life. It was really between us, that he would feel something or he would see the way I was looking at the words. I'm not really sure what, how to explain that, or it was something that interested him to play today. Hearing Michelle play the piano in my house, uh, there's nothing, there was nothing, I don't even know how to describe it. He, um, he doesn't have to prepare, you see. He doesn't have to use the music. He just, it flows from him. It's, it's, it's incredibly ethereal. Um, his fingers are t very, very light, never hits a false note, never hits anything hard. He's not funky or cool. He's so free, and he can flow, and this is part of his mind as well as his hands, he can flow from classical music to jazz. He has absolutely no personal restraint in style. He doesn't see himself as a, as a master of this or that. For him, it's all about melody. So I could feel him both decorating and still wanting just the melody. He trusted my honesty, really, towards melody, which I've always had. Like, that's something, I've never been a very florid singer. Um, I, I love the melody, and I think he liked that. I never really thought of it this way, but I think he loved that. He did say that even his teachers, um, when he was young, he said that there's nothing but the melody, really. When I walked into the concert hall in, in Belgium and heard those orchestrations, I was speechless. I, 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 even his incredible majesty at the piano, where, where he goes to the very end, and he loves to go to the very bottom, you see? He's very funny, too. He'll play, and then he'll just go, da, 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 and, he wants, and he'll pretend to fall off the piano. Even with all the keys, it couldn't have prepared me for what he did with all the potential of all those instruments. So it was unbelievable. It kind of felt comfortable because I already knew the swirls of his mind, you see? But the fact that it was there and happening was um, breathtaking. It's interesting, I think Michelle Legrand's music could appeal to 
lots of different singers, but I think he does like working with actors who sing. Um, he really actually, he hung on some of my words when I would say, Michelle, this really reminds me of, uh, and with Windmills of Your Mind, I said, of insomnia. And we used to talk, and just my feelings about the song, and its restlessness, and the imagery. He loved to hear it. And then he started to orchestrate my thoughts, you see. So he loved it. He loved it that we weren't just feeling and doing and vibing out. That, that I don't think would have held his interest. We had ideas about a lot of things. I had really, really strong emotional accuracy feelings about um, I was born in love with you, for example. And uh, was it, was, it was important to me, that song. Really important to me. And he could feel, you know, he sit next to me and he could see that it was like, oh, this is a major song. You know? And he's played this for so many people. To me, it was major. So he acknowledged that. He always, he always, even though he's worked with all these famous people, I know Sarah Vaughn did something amazing with that song. Amazing performance of that song. From recording, um, so many people. From I'm so humbled. I feel like a jerk sometimes talking about it. But, um, but he actually always treated me like my thoughts were super important to him. The album cover was shot by a photographer named uh, Larry Burkow, a downtown photographer, lives around the corner from me. And uh, uh, his wife, Claudia, is Austrian and she's an incredible mother and a friend of mine. We we're both in the same mommy group. Uh, that I started downtown called the Bowery Babes. So Larry's a daddy in the group. <laughs> and uh, I knew he was an incredible photographer. He thanked me actually about, when Victoria was, my first child was about a year, he thanked me with a family photo. So Larry heard the music and he, he knew it needed something. Just, he, we sat down at a, a coffee shop and he, he was just thinking, God, where should we do this? It has to be special, it has to be interesting. This record needs something, and I, we didn't know where to go. He thought of a car that he knows. There's an abandoned car, a 60s car, this amazing vintage car that has, is in terrible disrepair, but he knew where it was in the East Village in a parking, lot, a parking garage that someone's been paying for like three decades. They've been paying their parking bill, um, and, uh, and no one's there. There's no, honestly, there's no tires. It's bizarre, and it's fantastic, and it's covered in dust. And he said, this thing is so magical. So let's try it. I said, let's definitely try it. So we had to pay off this guy. And um, can I say that? Yes. <laughs> we had to pay off this guy and go, um, you know, up, up. it was cold. And, and we went into the car and we just, I put on a Prada dress. And, uh, and we just thought a little bit together and took pictures. The photo shoot trying to look French or trying to look like a film still, but it kind of became that. I sort of took on a character as well as still being myself and just thinking about the songs. Um, but I'm thrilled people f have told me that it feels a bit Catherine Deneuve, a bit film noir, a bit who is she? And my best friend said it looked like I just had a great kiss. So very few people I've let hear it. Um, but so far the immediate reaction is, wow, it, it, you achieved something with this. Um, a balance, you see, I always wanted to give Michelle all that expression, full expression of his creativity and be there as a voice for it all, you see. It's a lot to balance, that's a big undertaking. So I'm, I'm delighted to hear so far um, that that's been noticed, that there's, you, you, have, you, you can balance both of those, you're hearing them both. I'm very present, but his orchestrations are still very uh, uh, exciting and, and, and totally exposed, there's nothing, there's not, uh, the, the, uh, the mixing has been done so beautiful to celebrate his imagination.